Yo, what's good NFL fans? Welcome back to Touchdown Kingdom, the hub of all the latest NFL news and content. This is our second edition of the NFL 2022 first round mock draft. If you guys want to see our first edition, that will be down below in the description. We're going to try to be coming out with a mock draft every single Monday leading up until the NFL draft, which is all the way in late April. So if you guys are not subscribed to Touchdown Kingdom, make sure you do so because we have so much great NFL content coming your way all throughout the rest of the offseason. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and comment down below some of your thoughts about the mock draft and any of the picks that you agree with or disagree with. Without further ado, let's jump right into the mock draft. So starting off with the first overall pick, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Ikemekwanu, offensive line, NC State. Ikemekwanu has been racing up draft boards as of late, and many believe him to be the most talented offensive lineman in the draft class. Pair that with Jaguars' pressing need for an offensive line help, it's a match made in heaven for the Jaguars. I think it's a really big toss-up between Evan Neal and Ikemekwanu at number one, but in this mock draft, we got Ikemekwanu going number one to the Jacksonville Jaguars. With the second pick, we have the Detroit Lions selecting Aiden Hutchinson, edge rusher, Michigan. Hutchinson is probably the safest pick in this entire draft class, and the Lions are extremely lucky that the Jaguars can no longer afford to ignore their offensive line. Hutchinson is an instant difference maker and would improve any team that drafts him. With the third pick, we have the Houston Texans selecting Kayvon Thibodeau, edge rusher, Oregon. The Texans have a lot of questions regarding the future of their football team. But one area that they definitely need to improve on is their defensive front. J.J. Watt was the face of the franchise for many years, but now those days are in the past. Kayvon Thibodeau is a special player, who could maybe one day fill the shoes of the great J.J. Watt. It would be hard for the Texans to pass up on a player like Kayvon Thibodeau. With the fourth pick, we have the New York Jets selecting Evan Neal, offensive lineman, Alabama. The Jets general manager Joe Douglas loves drafting offensive linemen in the first round. He did two years ago with Mekhi Becton and again last year with Elijah Vera Tucker. This year, Joe Douglas is back at it and will secure another bookend offensive tackle to add to the very impressive young nucleus on the Jets offensive line including Mekhi Becton and Elijah Vera Tucker. With the fifth pick, we have the New York Giants selecting Charles Cross, offensive lineman, Mississippi State. The Giants need to fill out their offensive line. Andrew Thomas has come a long way since prematurely being labeled a bust, but they still need more talent to protect Daniel Jones and Charles Cross would bring all that and more. He's got raw talent and needs a bit more refining, but he has the potential to be a very special player in the NFL. With the sixth pick, we have the Carolina Panthers selecting Sauce Gardner, cornerback Cincinnati. After taking J.C. Horn in the first round last year, the Panthers have the opportunity to draft Sauce Gardner and form potentially the most lethal young cornerback duo in the NFL. Just picture Horn on one side and Gardner on the other. It would be a sight to see without a doubt. The Panthers have knees in different areas as well, but they'll have the opportunity to lock down two players at a premium position for the long term. With the seventh pick, we have the New York Giants selecting David Ajabo, edge rusher, Michigan. The Giants have needs in the trenches, and after grabbing an offensive lineman with the 5th pick, they'll look to go defense with the 7th pick. Ajabo is a big, physical presence coming off the edge. He's a bit raw, but that means there will only be room for him to get better over the years. He has the potential to be a very special player at the next level. With the 8th pick, we have the Atlanta Falcons selecting Kyle Hamilton, safety Notre Dame. Kyle Hamilton is one of the most versatile athletes in this draft class. As a safety, he can play all over the field and be productive from any spot. You can argue that Hamilton is the best player in this entire draft class, and the Atlanta Falcons will be very happy to see him still available at number 8. With the 9th pick, we have the Denver Broncos selecting Malik Willis, quarterback Liberty. Willis was super impressive during the Senior Bowl, and he really showed his dual threat ability as a quarterback. The Broncos are very uncertain about their future at this particular position, and if they can't land a veteran quarterback through free agency or the trade market, then drafting Willis would definitely make the most sense. With a 10th pick, we have the New York Jets selecting Jermaine Johnson II, edge rusher, Florida State. The Jets are another New York team that desperately needs help in the trenches. After securing protection for Zach Wilson earlier in the round, the Jets have now had the opportunity to think about defense. Jermaine Johnson has solidified himself as a first-round talent after an excellent Senior Bowl week. Paired with the healthy Carl Lawson, Jermaine Johnson would take the Jets' defensive line to where they want to go. 
With the 11th pick, we have the Washington Commanders selecting Kenny Pickett, quarterback, Pittsburgh. Pickett did not have the most impressive senior bowl ever, but the potential is still clear as day. Pickett checks all the boxes that you want from a quarterback in today's NFL. And the Washington Commanders are looking to answer their quarterback questions. This quarterback class is going to come down to the team's personnel preference. And there isn't really one player that drastically stands out over the rest just yet. That being said, I think Pickett makes the most sense for Washington here at number 11. With the 12th pick, we have the Minnesota Vikings selecting Traylon Burks, wide receiver, Arkansas. Why not pair Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen with an athletic freak in Traylon Burks? He has the size, speed, and hands to not only succeed in the NFL, but to dominate in it. Wide receiver is not necessarily a position of need for the Vikings, but I just feel like Traylon Burks with Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson is just so much fun for the new offense that's being implemented for the Vikings this season. With the 13th pick, we have the Cleveland Browns selecting Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, Ohio State. The Browns' passing attack was a joke this year, and they desperately need help in this department. While many of these problems lie with Baker Mayfield's play at quarterback, the Browns definitely need some new bodies in the receiver room, especially after losing OBJ this season. Garrett Wilson checks all the boxes, and would serve as another downfield threat for Baker Mayfield as he tries to get back on track the way he played in his rookie season. With the 14th pick, we have the Baltimore Ravens selecting Derek Stingley Jr., cornerback LSU. The Ravens' secondary was decimated by injuries last season, and Derek Stingley Jr. is one of the most talented players at this position in the entire draft class. He would be an important addition to a Ravens' secondary that might look very different by the end of the year. With the 15th pick, we have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting N'Kobe Dean, linebacker, Georgia. The Eagles are in a phenomenal position to build for their future in this draft class. With their first of three picks in the first round, they'll take linebacker N'Kobe Dean who has the potential to be a great player. He's all over the field on defense and is also a terrific leader. I feel like he would be a big time upgrade and have a really bright future for the Philadelphia Eagles defense. With the 16th pick, we have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting Trayvon Walker, defensive lineman, Georgia. Back-to-back -back picks for the Eagles, back-to-back -back defensive players, and back-to-back -back Georgia Bulldogs. Trayvon Walker is a beast. It would be learning from Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, two of the best and most consistent players in the game. The Eagles would ensure their defensive line remains strong even after those two players are gone. The Eagles have always prioritized the defensive line, and this would be a no-brainer pick for them with Walker at 16. With the 17th pick, we have the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Zion Johnson, offensive lineman, Boston College. Protecting Justin Herbert should still be the Chargers' number one priority as they move towards the 2022 season. Zion Johnson is a fantastic run blocker and a very technique-based pass blocker. He would be a great addition to the Chargers' offensive line. He could open up more running lanes for the Chargers' offense as well. Simply put, Zion Johnson would make life easier for Justin Herbert, which is exactly what the Chargers should be looking to do this offseason. With the 18th pick, we have the New Orleans Saints selecting Matt Corral quarterback Ole Miss. The Saints are in cap hell, and Alvin Kamara was just arrested, Drew Brees and Sean Payton are gone. This would be a very interesting season for the New Orleans Saints to say the least. One thing is pretty certain though, the Saints need a quarterback. Taysom Hill has proven that he's not an actual reliable quarterback option, and the Saints are reluctant to throw Ian Book into the fire. Bringing in Matt Corral would only make sense for the Saints. Maybe he'll become the long-term answer for the future, you never know. I love Corral's potential and especially his arm talent. With the 19th pick, we have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting Drake London, wide receiver, USC. The Eagles now look to add to the offensive side of the ball with their third and final first round pick of the 2022 draft. London has a huge frame, standing at 6'5", and he can go up and make those contested 50-50 balls for Jalen Hurts. Drake London paired up with Devontae Smith would be scary. If the Eagles can finally manage to get some reproduction out of Jalen Rager, they would have one of the best young receiving cores in the NFL. With the 20th pick, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Bernard Raymond, offensive lineman, Central Michigan. It's no secret that the Steelers' offensive line needs help, and Raymond will be a great addition to a struggling group. With Ben Roethlisberger officially retiring, the Steelers may need to address their quarterback concerns, but with a few already off the board, they'll wait it out and improve their offensive line while they can. 
Originally from Austria, Raymond is a former tight end, converted to an offensive tackle, and he's the most athletic offensive lineman in this draft class. With the 21st pick, we have the New England Patriots selecting Andrew Booth Jr., cornerback, Clemson. We all know how much Bill Belichick values his defense, and as the Stephon Gilmore era ends in New England, so begins the Andrew Booth Jr. era. Booth is a talented player that is coming off a phenomenal final season in college. The Patriots are going to get a gem here at the 21st pick. With the 22nd pick, we have the Las Vegas Raiders selecting Roger McCreary, cornerback Auburn. The Raiders secondary will look very different after this season due to certain players hitting the free agent market. McCreary would be a great addition to the Raiders defense, and pairing him with other young players like Nate Hobbs and Trevon Morig would only give the Raiders one of the most exciting secondaries in football. With the 23rd pick, we have the Arizona Cardinals selecting Logan Hall, defensive lineman, Houston. Chandler Jones is a free agent, and J.J. Watt is coming off a season-ending injury. Logan Hall was unblockable in his time at Houston and would be a great addition to the Cardinals' defense. He can line up anywhere on the line and disrupt regardless of where he's coming from. I feel like this would be a great pick for the Arizona Cardinals. With the 24th pick, we have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Devin Lloyd, linebacker, Utah. The Cowboys will make their defensive go from good to great with the addition of a single player. Devin Lloyd plays like Micah Parsons, but if the Cowboys can land him late in the first, they'll have the best young defense in football. I feel like this isn't really a position to need, it's kind of like best player available approach. And if Dan Quinn's defense really wants to take it to another level, Devin Lloyd makes a lot of sense in my eyes. With the 25th pick, we have the Buffalo Bills selecting Trent McDuffie, cornerback, Washington. The Bills can sit back and take the best player available here, and that might just be Trent McDuffie. The Bills had the best ranked pass defense in the NFL last year, and adding a player like McDuffie to this group would only be doubling down at their best position. The Bills roster is looking really good for the future, and I feel like it's a no-brainer for the Buffalo Bills. With the 26th pick, we have the Tennessee Titans selecting Tyler Linderbaum, offensive lineman, Iowa. On the back of Derrick Henry, the Titans rushing attack has become the scariest in the NFL. Drafting a stud like Linderbaum here at 26 to open up holes for Henry and Foreman would only make too much sense. Linderbaum is extremely athletic for a center and loves to get out and lead block. He would be a perfect addition to the Titans offense and I'd be shocked if he even lasted 26. I love this pick for the Titans. With the 27th pick, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. Tom Brady is gone, and Rob Gronkowski is most likely gone as well. Chris Godwin towards ACL towards the end of the season, and Antonio Brown is, you know, out of his mind. The Buccaneers really need help at the wide receiver position, and Chris Olave is a talented and versatile player that would only improve any offense that he lands on. I feel like this would be a great addition to an already dynamic Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense, but they'd need a quarterback. With the 28th pick, we have the Green Bay Packers selecting Jamison Williams, wide receiver, Alabama. Williams was the number one ranked wide receiver prospect in this draft class, but after tearing his ACL in the Natty Championship, his stock has officially fallen significantly. The Aaron Rodgers era could be over in Green Bay, and it's highly likely that Devontae Adams will walk if Aaron Rodgers does not return. Although Williams may not be able to play until 2023, he has the potential to be great and will potentially serve as Devontae Adams' replacement if he does walk in free agency. With the 29th pick, we have the Miami Dolphins selecting Daniel Filelli, offensive lineman, Minnesota. Miami is committed to Tua Tagovailoa and now needs to look to improve the protection around him. The Dolphins had one of the worst offensive lines in football last year, and although Filelli is a bit more raw than some other offensive linemen in this draft class, his massive 6'8", 400-pound frame gives him potential to be a true difference maker in this league. With the 30th pick, we have the Kansas City Chiefs selecting Daxon Hill, defensive back, Michigan. It took a little while, but the Chiefs' defense eventually figured it out this year. This does not mean that that unit is perfect, though. They could use some work in the secondary, and Daxon Hill would be a great addition to this group. He could be effective as both a corner and a safety, and with many of the Chiefs' secondary destined for free agency, this is a position group that they definitely want to think about. 
With the 31st pick, we have the Cincinnati Bengals selecting Kenyon Green, offensive lineman, Texas A&M. Protecting Joe Burrow is priority number one for the Bengals, and in a deep offensive line class, they're still able to draft a stud here at 31. Kenyon Green will be a day one starter and can play either tackle or guard at the next level. With the 32nd and final pick of the first round, we have the Detroit Lions selecting Sam Howell, quarterback UNC. The Lions might not be sold on Jared Goff after last season, but they don't have to be. Let's face the facts. Nobody really thought that Jared Goff would turn out to be the long-term guy for Detroit, and with their second pick in the first round, the Lions can afford to think about their future and at the most important position in the NFL, the quarterback. Like the rest of the quarterback class, Sam Howell's play doesn't jump off the screen at you, but the potential is definitely there. So we have the Detroit Lions trying to get their franchise quarterback for the future and Sam Howell with the 32nd pick. That does it for Touchdown Kingdom's NFL 2.0 mock draft. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please comment down below some of your thoughts of some picks you guys agree with, some picks you guys disagree with, and also like the video if you guys enjoyed and if you want to see more content here in Touchdown Kingdom. Make sure you stay tuned for more content for next week's mock draft and other free agency stuff all the way throughout the rest of the offseason. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.